Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Farnsworth. Jim Lehrer is on vacation. On the news hour tonight, the latest on the Brooklyn bomb plot, a wrap up of the week's campaign fundraising hearings, political analysis by Mark Shields and Paul Jagot, a Canadian American feud over salmon, and a David Gergen dialogue about the information glut. It all follows our summary of the news this Friday. Major funding for the News Hour with Jim Lehrer has been provided by the Archer Daniels Midland Company, ADM, supermarket to the world. And by New York Life, yet another example of New York Life's wise investment philosophy. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by the annual financial support from viewers like you. Security was tightened in New York City today after two Palestinian men were arrested for plotting to bomb the city's subway system. The FBI's New York director, James Kalstrom, said the suspects were probably less than a day from executing their plan. Police shot and wounded the men during a pre-dawn raid yesterday on a Brooklyn apartment. Five pipe bombs were discovered. New York police issued a statement saying the suspects were, quote, planning to target U.S. and Jewish interests worldwide. City officials held a news conference this afternoon. Mayor Rudolph Giuliani said one of the men claimed he'd been part of a terrorist organization in Israel. I think it is appropriate to, uh, to question uh, just why is it that this person was allowed to come into the country announcing that he's been accused of uh, being part of a terrorist group in Israel. And maybe in the future, we can learn something from this. We can learn from it that we should not parole people into the United States uh, when they say that they are allegedly or alleged to be part of a terrorist operation. It'd make things a lot safer for us if that was done more in a more serious way. And overseas today, Israeli soldiers moved into the West Bank and arrested more than 50 Palestinians suspected of terrorist activity. The sweep was in, re in reaction to Wednesday's bomb attack on a crowded Jerusalem market. Robert Moore of Independent Television News has the story. Israeli troops are continuing to arrest Palestinians they suspect of any involvement in extremist activity, taking them away for interrogation, hoping to break apart the infrastructure of what appears to be a new terrorist cell. But the Israelis have not yet tried to enter Palestinian-ruled territory. These pictures, filmed by Israeli soldiers themselves, also reveals the hunt for printed material that is regarded as inciting violence. The Palestinian security troops were also visible today, patrolling in Gaza. But it is not clear to what extent they are hunting down the militants in their midst. The Palestinian cities of the West Bank are still sealed off ringed by Israeli troops and military positions, provoking the charge that Israel is punishing two million Arabs for the crimes of a handful of extremists. Palestinians are still managing to cross into Israel on foot, evading patrolling border police. For that reason, the security forces remain on high alert. Sixteen of the eighteen ministers of the Palestinian cabinet submitted their resignations today. It was not known whether PLO leader Arafat would accept them. The Palestinian Legislative Council yesterday called on Arafat to dissolve the cabinet because of allegations of corruption and mismanagement. And that's it for the news summary tonight. Now it's on to the Brooklyn bomb plot, a campaign finance hearing wrap-up, Shields and Go, the Salmon Feud, and a David Gergen dialogue. We go first to the Brooklyn bomb story and to Margaret Warner. Acting on a tip, a special team of New York City police and federal agents raided a Brooklyn apartment yesterday, shortly before dawn. Officers shot and wounded two Palestinian men, Lafi Halil and Ghazi Ibrahim Abu Mazer, then arrested them. Another man was taken into custody unharmed. Authorities also seized five powerful bombs. They said at least one of the men had lunged for one of the bomb switches before he was shot. They would kill somebody in a area of 25, up to 25 feet in a inside confined area, and they would injure someone up to 100 feet in an outside area. The raid disrupted life in the Park Slope neighborhood of Brooklyn. Police evacuated 90 residents from nearby buildings before storming the apartment. 
and four New York City subway lines were shut down for seven hours, inconveniencing some 100,000 morning commuters. The apartment building where the men were arrested is just a few blocks from the Atlantic Avenue subway station. Police officials say one of the suspects later told them the station was among the group's intended bombing targets. The two wounded suspects are being held in a Brooklyn hospital where they are reported to be in stable condition following surgery. They were arraigned last night in absentia in federal court in Brooklyn, charged with conspiring to bomb the subway and other structures. Also last night, the FBI and the New York Police Department issued a joint statement saying the suspects were, quote, planning to target U.S. and Jewish interests worldwide. Earlier this week, a suicide bombing in Jerusalem killed 15 people. The Palestinian group Hamas claimed responsibility. This morning, President Clinton was asked if there was a connection between the terrorist attack in Israel and the alleged terrorist plot in New York. I cannot uh, comment and cannot reach a final conclusion yet because I haven't received a report of the direct investigation done, including the interrogation of the uh, people who were arrested. But I think it's important not to reach conclusions before we have uh, uh, ironclad evidence to support them. At another press conference today, James Kallstrom, head of the FBI office in New York, addressed the possibility that the alleged plot had international dimensions. This isn't some simplex, you know, armed robbery or bank robbery, not that those aren't awful crimes. It's a very complex matter that involves, you know, global issues and foreign policy and, and, uh, and, and the way people feel about other people. And it's, it's something that, you know, we don't jump into quickly and make determinations easily and don't make uh, uh, predictions on, on, on how things are going to turn out. Both Kallstrom and New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani said danger was only narrowly averted. I think we were close to a disaster and it didn't happen and that's the good news. You know, the police, if you, if you think about what happened in that apartment, the police officers quite, uh, by acting as quickly as they did, probably prevented a disaster from happening there. Uh, That's right. Ghazi, allegedly, uh, moved toward the bomb, was able to uh, activate one of the toggle switches, was able to knock it down. There were three others left. That was, as far as we can tell, a bomb that was ready to go off or could have gone off. So by shooting him, the police officers possibly prevented a pretty bad explosion right in that neighborhood. Joining us now is New York City Police Commissioner Howard Safer. Commissioner, thanks for being with us. What more can you tell us beyond what we just heard about the dimensions of this plot? Well, it's, some, it's something that we're really going to have to investigate. Uh, we took uh, almost a mountain of material out of the apartment yesterday, and we're going to just have to wait and see uh, what it shows us. It's mostly in Arabic. It's going to have to be translated. Uh, the New York City Police Department with its federal partners and the FBI. Uh, we have the Joint Terrorist Task Force here, and it's just something we're going to have to uh, run lead by lead. So lots and lots of written material, you're saying? That's right. And then the bombs themselves, these devices, were they sophisticated devices? I wouldn't call them sophisticated, but they certainly were very dangerous. Uh, we had a computer uh, a signature done of them and they would have uh, killed anybody within 25 feet within a mm -hmm. confined area and anybody within 100 feet uh, outside would have been seriously injured or killed. Now they've been called suicide bombs. What leads you to that conclusion or do you agree with that conclusion? Well, we're not, we're not commenting on the exact configuration but clearly these individuals intended to take these bombs uh, onto a subway train, set them off and the probability is that they and many others would have been uh, killed. And is it true that there were no timing devices on them or? Well, I'm not going to go into the uh, actual configuration because this is evidence that's going to be needed for the prosecution. And then um, what tells you that, as Mr. Kallstrom said earlier, that this could have happened within a day? How do you know that? Well, we, we have we've developed a lot of information. I mean, it was clear to us that these individuals uh, had built this bomb and intended to use it, and intended to use it probably yesterday or today. Now, let's look at the question that the president was asked to address today, and, and I just wonder whether you, anything you can tell us about, do you, have you uncovered any evidence linking this or these suspects to what happened in Israel this week? 
Uh, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to have to uh, talk to f uh, foreign countries, to the Israelis, and to a number of other countries and uh, services of other countries, as well as to go through all of this material. Uh, I'm hesitant to speculate until we really know. But when you issued this statement, or your department in the FBI last night, that you'd uncovered, quote, evidence that they intended to target Jewish and U.S. interests worldwide, um, w what was that evidence, or how widespread did, did you think it was going to be? Well, my concern is, of course, with New York City, and uh, the FBI uh, is looking at the worldwide implications. I see. I see. Now, there is a report on the Reuters wire this afternoon that law enforcement authorities say these suspects made f frequent phone calls from phones in local neighborhood stores to various ha or Hamas organization offices in the Middle East. Can you confirm that? I'm not going to confirm it. All I can tell you is that we have thousands of telephone numbers to track down. Uh, that's exactly what we in the FBI will do, and we'll see where they lead. Okay. Let's look at these two suspects, Mr. Abu Mazer first. Um, what can you tell us about it, about him? I can tell you that he came into the United States via Canada. Uh, he applied for an application for uh, political asylum, uh, and although that application was not granted, he was allowed to stay in the country. In, uh, in I'm sorry, in which country? In the United, United States. States. And, of course, my concern as a local law enforcement official is that somebody who comes into the country who states in his application that uh, he was accused of being a terrorist by the Israelis, and that's why he's uh, seeking political asylum. As a local law enforcement official, I think this is something that the Immigration and Naturalization Service certainly should have notified us about. Now, are you sure that he actually used this application? You know, someone from the State Department said today, if that had been on an application, he would never have gotten a visa. Well, I've not seen the application. I can only tell you uh, the information that's been passed on to me by uh, federal officials. Okay, and the other suspect, Mr. Khalil? Uh, we know very little about him. Uh, that's something that's going to be the subject of this investigation, and uh, we'll develop that as we go along. Um, what can you tell us about the person who tipped you off about this? Oh, I don't discuss sources uh, at all, so uh, I can tell you very little. Is this person in custody? Again, we don't discuss the nature of sources or where our information comes from. I mean, that's something that is extremely confidential and something that is uh, really very sacred in the law enforcement community. But, I mean, there have been all kinds of news reports that this was an Egyptian who's just been in the country two weeks. His name has been in several newspapers. Well, it's one thing for the media to report it. It's another thing for uh, law enforcement to confirm or verify what the media is reporting. I mean, I have heard... Uh, many, many uh, incorrect facts uh, put out by the media on this case in the last day or so, and it's not my job to uh, to, to help us do it. our job. Yes. Um, did law enforcement have any inkling of this before you got the tip? We got the first information on this at 10:35 on uh, Wednesday night, and uh, I will say that the police officers involved in this case did an outstanding job in taking it seriously. Following it up, our emergency service unit did an outstanding job in going into that apartment, uh, arresting the individuals, and making sure that these devices did not go off. And as you know, uh, one of the individuals attempted to detonate the device uh, during the raid. Does it trouble you that if this one tipster hadn't come forward, that there wasn't, I mean, if law enforcement didn't know a thing about it, that this could have happened? Well, you know. When you have a free society like we do, where you don't round people up, where you can't keep tabs on every individual, uh, you have to rely on intelligence and you have to rely on, on good law enforcement. And you have to rely on a little luck as well. And uh, finally, do you think others were involved or are you confident you've basically got your men? Well, I think we have the group that was going to cause damage uh, with these bombs in New York and I think we have the devices. Uh, I would be hesitant to speculate whether or not there are others involved, and until we complete our investigation, uh, it, it's really speculation. And, and who, which different agencies are now moving forward on what kinds of investigation? Okay, well, here in New York, we have a joint terrorist task force made up of the NYPD, the FBI, and all the other federal agencies, uh, and we will coordinate with uh, foreign governments and uh, other law enforcement agencies around the world and take all of this information and follow it wherever it leads. I mean, this is going to be a very widespread 
intensive and global investigation. All right. Well, thank you, Commissioner, very much for being with us.